Uh, uh, welcome and thank you for uh, coming to this lecture on workplace fatalities in Saskatchewan. Uh, my name is Sean Tucker. I'm a faculty member in uh, the Faculty of Business Administration. Uh, following this lecture, there'll be uh, time for audience uh, questions, discussion about uh, some of the findings that I'm presenting today. Uh, the lecture portion is being video recorded and later will be posted online on the U of R's YouTube page. Uh, the audience discussion will, will not be recorded. I also post the, my lecture slides and uh, supporting data files um, online in the coming days so that people can um, look at the, the raw data that was used in my analysis. I would like to uh, begin by thanking uh, J.D. Bell, Gabrielle Klass, uh, Noah Lai here, and Eagle uh, Thorne for their assistance uh, with this, this research. I'd also like to extend thanks to everyone, um, CEOs in the province, uh, directors of health and safety, unions, managers, supervisors, frontline workers, public servants, safety associations, injury prevention professionals, and everyone else who is working hard to support Mission Zero in the province. There's some amazing work uh, going on in Saskatchewan to eliminate injuries and fatalities, but we have more work to do. Today I'm going to talk about a serious matter that requires all of us to step up, uh, to think about, step up, and address. Saskatchewan has the highest rate of injury-related workplace fatalities among any province in Canada. In fact, our average injury fatality rate between 2010 and 2014 was 69% higher than Alberta's rate and 504% higher than Manitoba's rate. To my knowledge, there is no publicly available information on the fatality rates among Canadian jurisdictions. This lecture addresses that gap with a focus on Saskatchewan. Statistics hide the human face of fatalities, so I want to begin by showing pictures of some of the people who've died at work in Saskatchewan. Oh, I said I wouldn't do this, but... It's important to show how much it matters. Uh, workers' compensation boards and um, <clears throat> I will get through this presentation. <laughs> <clears throat> workers' compensation boards and commissions in Saskatchewan provide uh, no fault insurance to employers. <clears throat> and benefits to injured workers and the spouses of deceased workers. Many WCBs also carry out important injury prevention activities. And for full disclosure, I work with the Saskatchewan and Manitoba WCBs on a variety of injury prevention activities. Because of their role, WCBs uh, collect data on injuries and fatalities. Uh, the WCBs annually provide their injury and fatality data to an organization called the Association of Workers' Compensation Boards of Canada. The AWCBC applies a common definition of injury and fatality to these data to standardize the data so comparisons can be made among jurisdictions. Summary data is then publicly uh, made available on the AWCBC website. 
the summary data analyzed in this presentation is from the AWCBC website, unless otherwise stated. I have checked the data myself over last fall this year uh, with, with Noah's help and um, have had others look at my calculations. Um, if there's errors in the data, I accept responsibility for them, but I don't think there are any. <clears throat> oh, where's my error there? Here, okay. So before I uh, discuss provincial, the provincial fatality rates, for comparison purposes, we need to understand the trend in lost time injuries in Saskatchewan. Here's a calculation for uh, the lost time injury rate uh, that the AWCBC would use. Um, the definition of a lost time injury varies by jurisdiction. So some jurisdictions say like if you miss your next scheduled shift and you lose any income, then um, that's a lost time injury. Some say it's if the same shift, then that's a you, you leave for medical attention at the same shift, that's a lost time injury. The AWCB standardizes this and there's their definition of a lost time injury. So the calculation for coming up with the injury rate is the total number of lost time injuries in a jurisdiction divided by the number of full-time equivalents and then times 100. So you come up with a rate per 100 uh, full-time equivalents. So our rate in 2015 in Saskatchewan was 2.00. So that would mean if there were 100 people in this room, two of us would miss work due to work injury, okay? Uh, would have a lost time injury. About over six of us would miss work to uh, a lost time uh, injury uh, that didn't result in time off. Um, a quick note on the full-time equivalents. It's important to note here. The percentage of workers with WCB coverage varies by jurisdiction. There's about 48,000 employers in Saskatchewan that are insured by the Saskatchewan WCB. CB, WCB. Um, Employers in some sectors are self-insured. So I just want to make a note that most, the vast, vast majority of agricultural workers are not included in our full-time equivalents. They're, they're outside of the system, as are school teachers and others. So the total number of full-time equivalents is an estimated number. I won't go into the details on how that's calculated. It's not the full number um, that are employed in our jurisdiction. Our coverage rate is 73% in 2014, so 73% or about just over 400,000 workers were covered by the Saskatchewan WCB. C WCB. The coverage rate in Alberta and Manitoba is 92 and 76% respectively. Um, the next table you see shows the average lost time injury rate across all Canadian jurisdictions with Saskatchewan highlighted. Our average rate is second highest behind Manitoba. And throughout the presentation, I'll make comparisons between Manitoba's rate and Alberta's rate because they're uh, next to us. As you can see on the next slide, the trend, the green line is Saskatchewan, our uh, lost time injury rate uh, is declining over time. And you can see it's, the trend is quite steady and, and pronounced. And as I mentioned just a minute ago, in the latest year, 2015, our uh, fatality rate fell to 2.07, which again represents that trend downwards. <clears throat> so with this uh, trend in mind, let's uh, now turn to workplace fatalities. This table shows um, the number of fatalities in Saskatchewan since 2000. This information is publicly available um, in Workers' Compensation Board annual report and also on the AWCBC website. What is not available is the fatality rate, so taking the size of our um, workforce that is covered by uh, ins WCB insurance. Just a quick brief word on the de uh, fatality rate, the calculation, and the definition. So like lost time injuries, the fatality, what's counted as a fatality, uh, varies by jurisdiction. In Saskatchewan's legislation, there is a found dead clause, and it means if you're found dead at work um, and nobody sees you, you pass, 
you're counted as a workplace fatality. So you may die of natural causes, or it may be you're lifting something and, and you pass from that. Um, there are two categories of fatalities. Uh, the first is injuries, often referred to as traumatic injury. And uh, the second is uh, occupational disease. So with injury, this may be an immediate traumatic event. You're in a car accident, you're immediately killed. Uh, you're crushed between two pieces of machinery um, and, and you instantly die or you succumb to your injuries at a later time. Okay, that's sort of the injury category. And then the oc disease, occupational disease, is um, often there's a lag effect between exposure and, and death. Um, so if you breathe in asbestos fibers in 1975 and you pass now, that would be, and the WCP counts it. There's a, a link there to uh, an occupational uh, exposure. Um, then uh, it, would, it would count as a fatality. And, and on the occupational disease, um, there, um, the, the, the time of exposure and reporting to the WCB and death can vary. So one may have exposure um, to asbestos in 1980, and it may be just reported, linked to that occupation, report, and reported to the WCB, say, in 2014. Okay, so there's, there's, a, there's a la lags involved here. So the average uh, work-related work uh, fatality rate in Saskatchewan between 2000 and 2014 is uh, fourth highest in Canada. And um, so this, this includes both the uh, occupational disease and injury. And you can see there's our rate. So if there were 100,000 people, um, it would be 9.09 .09 would pass each nine people would pass each year of either an injury-related or um, uh, occupational disease. And uh, we are 59% higher than Manitoba's rate and 12% uh, higher than Alberta's rate. Now recall that our um, lost time injury rate was uh, steadily falling from 2000. You remember that graph? It's steadily falling. And what we see with um, the fatality rate, with the green line, if we were to have a trend line here, is a rel relatively gradual decline in our total fatality, work-related fatality rate over time. The red line is Manitoba, and the blue line is Alberta. From 2010 to 2014, you can see if we were to Two things. One is greater variance in the rate. And also you can see, if you're to draw a trend line, that it's going in the wrong direction. It's going upwards. And it's going upwards relative to our previous rate and relative to jurisdictions that border us. So it's gone up over 20%. And this is a rate. This is, yes, the workforce has grown in Saskatchewan, but this is a rate, our rate is changing, okay? And over the same period, you can see that, you know, Alberta's sort of mostly flat on average, I suppose, and Manitoba's got variance to it, but um, it's see, if I were to draw a trend line from here, it seems to kind of be steadily sloping downwards ever so slightly. So again, Work-related work uh, fatalities can be, are, are, are categorized as injury-related and occupational disease. And since 2010, the AWCBC uh, has publicly um, reported um, the number uh, by uh, um, disease and the number by injury. And so I'm, and I just want to be clear that they started reporting this in 2010, publicly reporting the number, not the rate, but the number. So that's why this analysis is starting in 2010 that I'm going to present now. So um, in terms of our average injury fatality rate, we are third highest among any jurisdictions and by far highest among any Canadian provinces. 
We are uh, over 500% higher than Manitoba's rate, and we are 69% higher than Alberta's rate. And only Nunavut, Northwest Territories, and Yukon are higher than us, and frankly, um, I think that they should be not on this list because they have a very, very small workforce and they're engaged. Their risk pool is, is far different than, than the other jurisdictions. Graphically, so you see the green line here from 2010, uh, 2014. I should say the 2015 data is um, not on here because it is it's just coming out now on the AWCBC website. So I don't, we don't have that data yet. But you can see here clearly Saskatchewan um, has an issue uh, with in work-related injury fatalities. That, these data show that very clearly. In 2015, I do have data from the, the Saskatchewan WCB uh, annual report and, and our, our rate is 5.49 5 per 100,000. You know, it's 5.49 is just, you know, up, up here. We're not changing a great deal. And my sense from looking at the Alberta annual report is that their rate has fallen. So we're, we're, we're not, we're still got this problem. We have this problem. Okay. Um, just, uh, a closer look at the injury-related fatalities by cause. So this data comes from the Saskatchewan uh, WCB. And there's 137 injury-related fatalities from 2011-2015. Um, here's how they break down. 21% by heart attack, 29% by motor vehicle or aircraft. Most of them are motor vehicle. 17% uh, uh, by other and 33% by traumatic event. Um, the other category um, uh, includes um, those that um, s uh, die of maybe another cause, so like they die of an infection, but the original incident involved, say, um, a motor vehicle incident or something like that, okay? So it's the ultimate cause of death, but that's recorded here for cause. So that's other would sort of include that. Uh, this um, slide here breaks out uh, the um, fatalities, the total fatalities by sector. So in, in, in the WCB, these are, there's a rate code uh, a link to each of these sectors um, and then by cause in the number. So our top sectors with injury-related fatalities would be uh, transportation, uh, courier, commercial bus, road construction, oil well servicing, residential construction. Uh, when you, I haven't done this for this talk, but when you dig deeper into this data and you look at the number of people working in these sectors and come up with a fatality rate, there are some sectors that are worse than others. <coughs> there are some sectors that are worse than others. And then when you compare their fatality rate to their injury rate, I mean, I, there, there must be injury underreporting going on in this province. It must, it, in some sectors, it must be significant because it doesn't make sense. Some of these sectors have incredibly small, low, pardon me, low injury, lost time injury rates and high fatality rates. It just doesn't add up. It just can't be. The second type of fatality is our disease uh, fatalities. Again, AWCBC started uh, posting this data in 2010. If I could go back further, I would, but the data, the publicly available data starts in 2010 and the latest available is 2014. In terms of occupational disease, asbestos, other cancers, uh, Saskatchewan is seventh or sixth lowest in occupational disease fatality rate. Uh, we're clustered right in there with Manitoba and Alberta. There's really not a lot of difference there. Graphically, you can see um, Saskatchewan with the green line, a trend line would be, would be downwards. Of course, um, this rate can change these cases. Uh, the exposure can be months, years, decades earlier. So uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, several 
I think it's fair to say, hundred people in the province that would have uh, a diagnosis in that and won't be recognized as a fatality until they pass. Um, our disease, using um, the, the, the information in the, uh, the annual report, our disease uh, rate is 2.15 per 100,000 uh, in 2015, which represents, again, that sort of downward trend for now, at least, for now. Uh, if we take a closer look at these, there's been uh, 66 uh, occupational disease fatalities in, in Saskatchewan since 2011 to 2015. Uh, most of these are in um, the city's urban areas here, and um, a, a high number of these would be related to um, uh, our, our first responders in that exposure to asbestos. Um, unassigned and self-insured, so uh, anybody that's working under Canada Labour Code, federal government in the province would be self-assured. The uh, WCB in Saskatchewan adjudicates those claims, so that's why you see them there. And unassigned, um, the definition, th that, that uh, fatalities, uh, occupational disease fa fatalities that um, are linked to that category um, are, represent exposure to, say, asbestos, but it's hard to link it to um, a specific uh, rate code. If somebody worked and could have been exposed in several different rate codes, it would go to, to unassigned. So um, those are the numbers uh, from the AWCBC data and, a, and, and somewhat of a closer look at them. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this, some ob an observation and a recommendation, and then um, we can open it up for discussion. So um, this graph here shows our fatality rate per 100,000. So this is OC disease and injury, right? From 2000 to 2014. And this is our injury rate, okay? Per 100 full-time equivalents. This is per 100,000. So I realize the scaling is off. But anyway, what what I think is is interesting and troubling here is that we have a steady decline in our injury rate. At the same time, in about 2009, we see the trajectory for fatality rate going in the opposite direction. And there's really two schools of thought, and then there's people that kind of take a view in between. On one side, um, people say we've made genuine improvements in safety in, in, in the province over the years, and that's why our injury rate's falling. And I will say from, from working with, with employers, working with the WCB, I, I have seen employers transform themselves. We have seen these cases. I have talked to CEOs who have seen the light and are on a journey towards better safety. There is, there is no doubt that this is going on in Saskatchewan. Um, the other school of thought is that we are achieving some, most, a lot of the gains in reducing our lost time injury rate by suppressing injury reports and or better return to work programs so people don't miss that next uh, scheduled shift. They're coming, they get modified work. And the, Th that school of thought is that some of those return to work programs are quite aggressive in order to keep numbers low. Those are the two school of thoughts. Um, I would like to see more data on this, but it's the trend that it, it seems to me that it's, it's simply not possible that safety is improving in Saskatchewan if our if our fatality rate is going up. It, it just, it, it, it must be a mix of both where we're getting, you know, some better safe, safety in, in many workplaces. We're seeing more, better return to work programs, but maybe some aggressive return to work. And in some sectors, given some of the pressure to reduce lost time injuries, underreporting has got to be a problem. Some of the targets that have been set for reducing lost time injuries in this province are so aggressive and it wouldn't surprise me if people would be underreporting. And we're talking in some sectors like very significant reduction in um, 
the lost time injury rate. It's very hard to achieve that. Very hard to achieve that. So what's being done? What's being done right now to um, <clears throat> improve uh, safety in Saskatchewan? And I, a lot is being done. Um, in, in terms of fatalities, uh, there's um, a team at the U of S is studying patterns uh, and fatalities fatality to identify uh, where, where we need to focus attention. Um, there's a strategy, the WCB's um, working on a strategy, serious injury and fatality prevention strategy. There are many campaigns. You've seen um, Mission Zero campaigns. I'm sure most people in the room have seen them. Um, resources, partnerships with SGI to encourage safer driving because a lot of our injury-related fatalities are related to motor vehicle. In 2015, we had 2,500 workplace inspections up dramatically from the last year but still below our historical average in Saskatchewan, actually well below our historical average. 75% of those are targeted and 25% uh, of those are random. We need to have more workplace inspections in this province. We probably need to double that number, I would say. Uh, we have inspection blitz blitz blitzes in high risk sectors such as re residential construction. There was a, a press release from WorkSafe Saskatchewan a few weeks ago that said that, um, that found that like only about 50% were actually using fall protection correctly. We have a huge compliance issue in this province. We need more inspections, we need more education, we need more of a lot of, to pull a lot of different levers. Um, we have the Saskatchewan Employment Act and occupational health and safety regulations uh, here. Um, we have one of the highest, if not the highest, one of the highest fines for corporations up to 1.5 million. And the rationale for that when uh, the government made this change a few years ago was this would be a deterrent effect uh, for um, companies not taking their safety responsibility seriously. However, if you go on la labor relations and workplace safety website, you will find that the fines for worker serious injury and worker fatalities are still small. Just yesterday, if you saw the press release from LRWS, there were a, um, a, a sewage company in Swift Current, I believe, that uh, uh, pled guilty to um, the death, uh, death of two, two of their workers for hydrogen sulfide. $15,000 for each worker that lost their life there plus a $6,000 victim surcharge, hardly a deterrence effect. So the Ministry of Justice has really got to step up, Crown prosecutors, if this is to be effective. Um, the the minister, uh, Minister Morgan uh, reported that there was evidence uh, gathering training for occupational health inspectors um, to, to try to get more prosecutions in the province. Um, and there are several injury prevention activities. This is a, not the place to talk about them, but there's just a lot going on, a lot of great things going on in the province. Um, and trying to change and strengthen Saskatchewan safety culture. We need more resources um, to, to be effective. We, we do, we really do. And I had some remarks that being in my talk about that, but I, I unfortunately just can't seem to Maybe I'll come back to them later, but I, I, I wasn't able, uh, unable to read them, but there are some really good things going on. Um, I think we need to do more. I have four recommendations for consideration. Um, our, our Ministry of Labor Relations and Workplace Safety says that their inspections are effective. Research on inspections, random inspections, targeted inspections shows that they're effective. But compliance is still low, and I mentioned the compliance rate for fall protection and residential construction. We should hire more inspectors, OH, uh, occupational health officers, to work in the field. Um, this wouldn't cost the government any money. This wouldn't cost the provincial government any money. And I see some heads nodding, and, and you know why. 
because the OHS division in the Ministry of Labor Relations and Workplace Safety is funded by employer premiums that are contributed to the WCB. The WCB pays for our inspectors in the province, not the provincial government. Um, in 2014, we introduced, the province introduced summary offence ticketing. Summary offence ticketing is, is a, was a, a, a tool brought in to um, help bring employers in line who weren't responding well to the other tools that the occupational health officers have. Notice of contravention, compliance undertakings. They're in, they're in the, uh, the act. Those are the powers they have. And so the government, following other jurisdictions, introduced summary offense ticketing, which basically would allow the officers to come in and basically write something like a parking ticket. You're not in compliance with this. And it was reserved for um, compl uh, compliance, a set number of compliance issues and for employers for whom the other tools were not working. It was an escalation tool you'd use to escalate things, but one step below prosecutions with the Ministry of Justice. It was all this tool was also meant to alleviate pressure on the Ministry of Justice because there's a backlog in the Crown Prosecutor's Office of cases. And I, to my knowledge, that backlog still exists to this day. And it was to, and a, and a case going through the Ministry of Justice can take several years to complete. And summary offence ticketing was supposed to expedite that process for things and bring about greater compliance in the province. Um, unfortunately, to my knowledge, we only have two of, and I don't know how many occupational health officers we have in the province, but we only two of them have the credentials to issue summary offence tickets. Um, we need to hire more occupational health officers and we need to give the credentials, I think, to more of them to give out tickets if we want to address our fatality issue as, part, as one tool to address the fatality rate in the province. We could also extend the summary offence tickets to a wider range of contraventions. If we look at Alberta and um, Ontario and, I, and other jurisdictions, they publish limited information about fatalities soon after they occur. And given our high rate of injury-related fatalities, we should look seriously at doing the same. Why wouldn't we? Currently, we wait about 15 months for the WCB annual report to come out to find out how many people have died on the job in Saskatchewan. We will, before that, we will hear about a small number from media stories who die, but media only picks up a very small number who die on the job. Ontario, they just have one sentence posted here. Uh, no identifying information about the worker. Um, they do give the location, they give the time and the date that it's posted. We should do the same so that the public, the media is aware and the public and other safety advocates can be aware of the trends um, that are occurring. And uh, finally, um, there is a need I believe for more public awareness and public education about how to refuse uh, potentially dangerous work in the province. Uh, this critical worker right was created here in Saskatchewan by the labor movement in the early 1970s by Bob Sass and others. And when I teach undergraduate students, um, I cover this right and I find that an alarming number do not know how to refuse dangerous work. And it would cost us very little to engage in public awareness campaign about how to use this right. And it is meant to prevent serious injuries and fatalities. And it was created right here in Saskatchewan and mimicked by other jurisdictions all across North America. But too, too few know about it, know how to use it. And employers need to know how to, 
know about it. And they need to know that workers are protected from discrimination, from retaliation for using this right. Employers need to know this. We can't just tell workers about this right. We also need to educate employers about this so that they understand the process and respond appropriately. So those, that, that ends the presentation. That's, those are the numbers. Um, and those are some thoughts on how we could uh, prevent serious injury and fatalities in, in Saskatchewan. And I appreciate you coming. And um, I open the floor up to questions. And I think at this point, we'll just shut the uh, video off.